Hey guys, Woodruff here, and I need to go to the next slide, apparently. <laughs> this video is going to be about um, kidney stones. So kidney stones, because we got to make things complicated, can be called kidney stones. You might also see the name urinary tract calculi, or you might see the word nephrolithiasis. So lithiasis is stones, but we're also, you know, had the video about gallstones, which is cholelithiasis, so try not to get them confused, nephro course is always the kidneys so just know on an exam you can see any of these urinary tract calculi kidney stones nephrolithiasis so know all the names but these are stones that form in the kidneys um, the risk factors for these are going to be um, being of male gender uh, living in certain climates like hot climates I think they said the south southwest uh, like so here in Texas we have the high, some of the higher um, you know incidences of this because of dehydration um, so definitely time of year two during summer or hot months is going to be um, higher incidence of this certain dietary factors can affect uh, genetics plays um, a role in lifestyle, like having a, a very sedentary lifestyle, because you have to um, move to get urinary flow, kind of like, you know, for my bowels to move, I have to get up and move around. And so that's what creates peristalsis. So um, this is also the other reason why it's so key for um, patients uh, with um, urinary stuff too, like in order to get urine flowing well, we have to get up and get moving. Um, so um, what do you call it? Um, stones can form if we have stasis of urine as well. So pretty much hot temperature climates, summer months, um, a little bit more common in men, uh, what do you call it? Um, dietary factors. And that's like stuff like high um, intake of what's known as oxalate, which is one of the stones we'll talk about here in a second. So like tea and fruit juices, high sodium intake or high uric acid intake, because there's also uric acid um, stones. Um, anyone who's dehydrated has fluid losses, um, like more concentrated urine is going to be more likely to gather these stones or these particles. Um, and like I mentioned, just um, having a sedentary occupation or being more immobile can increase your risk. So there's a few different types of stones. Um, I've marked the three kinds that are most common calcium stones, and sometimes they can be a mix of like calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate. Um, but calcium oxalate and uric acid stones are probably the two most common you're going to see talked about. There are other stones. We don't go too, too deep into them, but this is how they look in case you're wondering. Imagine trying to pass these sweet babies through your uh, urinary tract. So what would we expect to find in this patient? Um, the symptoms vary based on the client, depends on what kind of stone, where it's at. Um, but usually this pain, uh, patient's going to complain about like a sudden severe pain that moves. And usually the pain's going to be in their flank, in their back, or their lower abdomen. Um, what this is um, usually referred to as is renal colic. You know, we talked about biliary colic. This is renal colic. Um, so they consider or compare this to like the worst possible pain that you can experience, and especially for men. They compare it to like, this is the only way that men can experience childbirth. Um, but, um, you know, it the, the pain from renal colic comes from spasms or dilation of the urinary tract as the stone is trying to pass. So these patients don't necessarily have constant pain, but they have pain with movement or especially when the stone gets stuck along the track and there's a spasm or a dilation of the urinary tract. Uh, people that have renal colic have a lot of difficulty sitting still. They're going to keep moving because it, it does feel better when they're moving. Because um, when they're moving, the stone is moving too and moving forward, which helps to relieve the pain. Um, expected findings too would be um, sometimes if it's severe, they might have nausea, vomiting, they can be very sweaty. Um, and um, sometimes it can be painful to urinate. Again, it's not an actual like difficulty urinating problem usually. Um, it's just the pain from the movement of those stones. So of course, um, a priority here is going to be pain assessment uh, and then also looking for other symptoms if they have any GI symptoms um, and any urinary symptoms. Um, again, usually they don't have urinary symptoms, but we wanna make sure they're not experiencing a complication or things aren't getting worse. So we don't want, they shouldn't be having any um, hopefully difficulty urinating aside from that they might be hurting and it hurts to urinate. So yes. Um, so a client with a UTI is getting better if they have decreased or no pain, if they have evidence of collection of the stone, like they strain their urine and the stone has passed, 
um, if they're getting worse, if their pain, pain is increased or worsened, or they have difficulty voiding, um, that like a sign of a complete obstruction. Now, there's other things that can happen here. Of course, if they do have severe kidney stones and they're nauseous and vomiting, it's possible they could have other stuff come up. But just know that that's not common. Like usually this is like, hey, this patient has this stone um, in their urinary tract. It needs to pass. Um, they're going to feel better once they pass it. But it's just um, it's usually a temporary but pay, very painful, um, you know, um, movement of the stone through their body. There's not usually a lot that comes with it unless it gets stuck. We can't pass it. Um, and then just their pain is hard to manage. So the, um, the diagnostic testing, usually to visualize that they have a stone, we can do an ultrasound or a CAT scan um, to see that. We may do a urinalysis to see if there's infection present, um, how their kidneys are doing, maybe check their electrolytes as well. Sometimes if it's persistent or they're having regular stones, we might do like urine testing for electrolytes. Um, but most of the time, um, we're the biggest thing that we're doing is just catching the stone. So what we're doing with this is that we're going to do what's called straining all their urine, which is where we put a strainer um, wherever they're peeing into. We have to put a strainer in it. So if they pee in a urinal, um, we have to then pour it through a strainer, but we have to catch all their urine. We don't want them just peeing in the toilet. We want to catch all their urine or put their urine through a strainer so that if there's any stones, we know, hey, they've passed their stones. Um, so yeah, and a lot of times it's not just one stone. It can be multiple stones. It just depends. Oh, and just the reason why that's so important is, is because like, it's not catching it to be like, yay, we caught it. Their stone's gone, but we need to know what kind of stone it is until we know what kind of stone it is. We don't know what kind of dietary advice to give them or lifestyle changes or further treatments they might need. Um, so medical treatments. Um, so really a lot of times it's just waiting for that stone to pass. We want to support them along the way. We can do things to help ease urinary flow like that Tamsolacin. I told you it's like almost on every single one of these disease processes, um, pain management with NSAIDs and opioids is super helpful, um, you know, because pain is going to be a top priority for um, uh, urinary tract calculi or kidney stone patients. So like, you know, we talk about there's like a there's only like most of the time pain is not the highest priority, but it's the major issue with kidney stones. So this is going to be a top priority for these patients is to get them. And I'll tell you nine times out of 10, we're using opioids because they need the strong stuff. But um, this new textbook did talk about the use of NSAIDs if they're effective. Um, then we can do things like um, uh, go up with a scope and get the um, stones out if they get stuck. Uh, sometimes if there are too big, we have to do what's called a lithotripsy. And there's a couple different types we can do by laser, shock wave, ultrasound wave. Um, hydraulic waves. Um, and um, sometimes we have to place a stent where we're effectively just trying to break up the stone to allow it to pass. And then sometimes if they're really stuck in the kidneys with certain types, we may have to actually go into the kidney itself to remove them. Um, so there's a picture of the cyst um, cystoscope that we're going in and getting rid of the um, things. Here's a lithotripsy where you can see where they're either um, providing like vibratory pressure or some sort of waves that are going to help to break up the stone. You don't have to know deep about those, just understand, um, you know, that the purpose is to break up the stone. So what can I do as the nurse? Encourage ambulation. It helps to pass the stone um, and it also might help relieve their pain too. Um, straining all urine is the number one thing we can do. We need to know the culprit to help prevent more stones. I want to prevent dehydration um, to make sure that they don't, uh, what do you call them? Because dehydration makes stones worse or can encourage more stones to develop. Um, but I never want to force fluids on these patients. Sometimes they might think like, oh, hey, if I drink a whole lot, I'll flush it out. But sometimes it can actually um, make their pain worse. So never force fluids or encourage them to drink a ton. Um, they just need to have a modest, uh, like a good amount to prevent dehydration. Um, monitor their electrolytes just in case they might be off. Um, again, usually these patients don't have a lot of fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Usually it's pain and then just getting that stone out. Um, education wise, we want them to um, in between, I'm not talking about during, but like to prevent further stones, drink tons of water. You know, the more active they are, the more water they need, depending on their climate, they might need to go above and beyond to get that water intake. Want to limit consumption of sodas, coffees, and tea um, to help to decrease the risk. Those are um, a lot of irritants or things that can also cause formation of stones. Um, and then dietary changes, it's always going to depend on the type of stone. So calcium oxalate, we like less sodium and less oxalate and more calcium. And I know this is going to seem counterintuitive, 
because it's a calcium oxalate stone. So you would think I want less calcium. Um, but the actual problem with calcium oxalate stones um, is, is that they are wasting more calcium um, in their um, in their kidneys or like getting rid of more because sometimes they have a higher sodium diet. So we actually want less sodium because less sodium wastes less calcium through the kidneys, which means there's less calcium stones that can form. Um, then also a gout diet as well. But before we go, let's do a practice. So kidney stone foods, which of the following foods should a client avoid if they're at risk for a calcium oxalate or uric acid stone? Um, so like we talked about low sodium, we want more calcium and we want, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, less um, uric acid foods or purine foods. So spinach, so you may not know this, but spinach is a high calcium, um, oxalate food, sorry, not calcium, high oxalate food. So even though spinach is usually, we love our leafy greens, leafy greens are no bueno in oxalate territory. So I should avoid spinach if I'm at risk for oxalates or calcium oxalate stones. Um, shellfish, hmm. If you remember, shellfish are one of the foods that can lead to increase in uh, we caught um, purines. So I was doubting myself for a minute there. <laughs> Increase in purines. So this is one of those things that we want to avoid, like when we talked about the gout diet. Um, so um, this is also something I want to avoid, but this one is for uric acid. Cantaloupe. This is actually something that is okay. I do not need to avoid cantaloupe. We like increased intake of most fruits and most vegetables. Again, we have to be careful with some of those um, grief, uh, green leafy vegetables, um, but um, cantaloupe is a good addition to the diet. Turkey sandwich. Hmm. So this might seem like it could be okay. It does have some meat in it, which we worry about meats with uric acid. But the bigger issue here is it's probably high in sodium because processed meat like deli meats, um, that's going to be high in sodium. So that can increase my um, calcium oxalate stone risk. I'm going to stay away from that. Nuts and seeds. These are also another no, no, they can, um, they have increased levels of oxalate in them. And so can lead to more calcium oxalate stones, red meat. This is a no, no for uric acid stones. Remember, we want to stay away from organ meats, red meats, and things like that. Chocolate. So chocolate, sadly, it's a part of the oxalate cocoa powder and stuff like that. You got to stay away from it. So it's also a no go. And then we're left with bananas. Bananas are a low oxalate food. So we are good to go with bananas. So the only two things really they should eat here are cantaloupe and bananas. Welcome to your new diet. <laughs> just kidding. So most people are not going to necessarily be at risk for, they're going to just have had one type of stone. Hopefully they don't have to restrict all of these things, but definitely um, remember, it's not that they can never have any of this stuff. It's all about moderation, but for nursing school, you know, we like to um, do a little bit more black and white for you ish. So um, it just kind of gets you more familiar with these. So what not to eat. So for the oxalate, we want to avoid animal proteins, um, green leafy, um, like spinach, dark roughage, um, sodium rich, rich foods, because it wastes more calcium. And then for purines, we want to avoid meats and protein, avoid seafood. Um, think overall of um, the gout diet. So you might want to do a refresher on what that was if you don't remember. All right, that's it for um, kidney stones. Last video of the semester coming up. Can you tell how excited I am? See you soon.